Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing today, man? Doing good. How you? I'm all right, man. Today we got a special guest for real. This is a childhood friend. Travel here all the way from Utica to be with his boy, Zef Manuel. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. Did I say that right? Zef Manuel. Yeah, okay. You said, it, you said it right. You got it. Oh, man. What's going on, boss? You know, um, a lot's been going on. We got the brand. It's jumping. Y'all got to check that out. ZefManuel.com. Um, man, we just grinding day by day. You know how it go. So... I want to get into the brand and let people know a little bit about, like, what what is the brand? So the brand is more so about, um, you know, just self, spiritual growth, self-growth and willpower. The logo is a tiger. Matter of fact, it's right here behind me. If y'all watching this, let me see. The logo is a tiger. And it's not about the look of the tiger, but it's about what's inside of the tiger. Like, the way the tiger think, the mindset. The, the willpower, the courage, the determination, the self-motivation, you know what I'm saying? It's self-driven no matter what. Every day a tiger going to wake up and be a tiger. And that's the same type of motivation we got to have as humans and everything like that. But, um, yeah, that's so, pretty much. How does the tiger and what the tiger represents coincide with you as a human being? For me, personally, like, oh, personally. Yeah. You got me? You can hear me? Yeah. All right, so for me personally, it's like not too long ago I had a situation where I had a, a serious injury, which left me in a wheelchair. Um, it's been almost it's going on two years, but even after my injury, I was in the hospital for a few months. But my friends and family that was there, they never seen me show like no negative emotions. I was always positive about it. You know what I'm saying? Like I was so eager to get outside and get back to my everyday life and just continue to grow and um not only that but i got a daughter so i had to set like a good example for her like no matter what happens you can always overcome it no matter what the situation is and um so for me it just go like hand in hand like just that self-driven being self-motivated like this is a characteristic like if it's in you it's in you this ain't nothing you could just make up and be like oh i'm i'm, I'm gonna be self-driven for the rest of my life starting today and like nah this is something from childhood that i always had you know what i'm saying so that's how it go hand in hand with me. And, um, I love it. Yeah. So walk me through a regular day for you in a brand. A regular day for me in a brand? All right, so it depends on the day, really. Like today was a good day, you know. Um, Some days it'll go good like this. Like I got the link up with you, Shaleen Love. We did a photo shoot. We got a lot of BTS behind the scenes. We had a couple models pull up. We had Young Sa here helping us. We we did a lot. We had a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? Now we here doing a podcast. So this was a great day. And then you got other days where I be like, all right, I wake up. What's going on today? Ain't nothing really going on. So I would get up, you know, go outside, take my wheelchair park, get in the car, and I would go to a mall in the nearest city. I might go to Albany. I might go to New York. I might Sometimes I might go all the way to Boston or Buffalo just because it's a different area and Let's pass out flyers. Let's rewind a little bit. Yeah. How are you getting around in the wheelchair <laughs> in the car? I like you gotta walk me through that. All right, come on. So like it's well, for me it's simple. I would say it's simple. It's really others might not, but so I can't drive with my feet. So I got a stick that I drive with. You push you push the bottom for the brake and you push the thumb for the gas. So what I do every morning, this is my regular routine. I go to my car, you know, um, I hop over from the chair to the car. I got to take the chair apart. I take the one wheel off first, throw it behind me, boom. <laughs> Turn the chair around, take the other wheel off, throw it behind me, boom. Then I fold the chair up, boom. Take the whole chair, put it across, throw it in the back seat. So that's like a, every, every time I get in and out of the car, so I'm telling you, I get out, I come out the crib, I get in the car, I got to take it apart. I go to wherever I'm going, if it's a mall or if it's here. Got to take the chair back apart. Go inside the mall. Do what I do. Come back out. Got to put the take the chair back apart, put it back together. You know what I'm saying? So I'm taking it apart and putting it together at least four or five times a day on a regular day. And um, it might sound like a lot, but if you, if you, if you want it as bad as a person like me, it's like it's, 
it's it nothing is really. It is, it is yeah. what it is. It's like your everyday life. Like, let's just get to it. How can we get past this? You know, you can't sit around and just cry with spilled milk. You got to clean it up and keep going. You feel I love me? It. So now you're going to these different malls in these different cities and you're passing out flyers for your brand. Yeah. So I want the listeners and the viewers to know this is what hard work and dedication is. Definitely. Because you could be just sitting at home feeling depressed, feeling sorry for yourself and letting life pass you by. But you flipped it and now you're just taking life by the horns and you're like, yo, listen, this is what it is. I still have my dreams and my aspirations. So this is what I have to do. I love it. Nah, yeah. Life is what you make it. Exactly. You can't sit around and just waiting for something good to happen. Like, nah, you got to make it happen. <laughs> or it ain't going to happen at all. You feel me? So, yeah, man, we just, 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 we just making it happen, man. And so, the Zeph Manuel brand, how did that come about? So, I, so I got another childhood friend that I knew since fourth grade. His name is Manuel, right? And, um, you know, when I first met him, they had came from Puerto Rico. And he used to be just in the back of the class. This is fourth grade. He used to be in the back of the class just drawn, like not talking to nobody. You know what I'm saying? So me being Hawaiian, I go back to, yo, sub, what you doing? All right, what's your name? And he be drawing, we talk, all right, we kicked it off. He even started showing me how to draw after that. So in my head, I always wanted to, to like, do something with them. You know what I'm saying? They was always, cre- they twins, actually. They was always creative, and um, we was always good friends. And I was always, like, had the hustling mentality to where, like, something was going to happen eventually. So about, I say about three years ago, I went to him like, yo, what's up? Like, you get fly, you a artist, I get fly, I'm a hustler. Like, let's put this together and make something happen. Like, let's make, let's do a clothing brand. And he thought about it for a couple of days. He's like, let me sit on it. He sat on it, came back. We had a serious talk, and he's like, let's do it. So prior to Zeph Manuel, we had a clothing brand called Forty Two Dreams, and um, it was cool. It had a it had a crazy mean. It was cool, and um, it was it was actually going decent for us. But we wanted something that looked at, like more luxurious, something that we could have right there next to Gucci, next to Louis, next to Fendi, and all of that. And um, that's how we came up with Zeph Manuel. We basically just put our names together, and that's what's going on. So he 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 works heavy in the designer field. He do a lot more than that. And um, yeah, this is that's that's how we got here today. All right, I see a lot of brands that may not know the first step, let alone 10 steps down the line. Yeah. So walk me through some of the process on how you go from garment to putting your logo on it to selling it. Oh, man. Um, I get, like, for us, when we first started off, we thought we knew so much. We was, we was really lost, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, we started off, we went to I went to like we went to the local screen printing shops and everything. Um, we would just get our logo printed on there. We went as far as buying heat presses and all of that for the house. We would we would have a hundred t shirts in the house, putting logos on them and then doing custom paint and hanging them up to dry. We got we got a hundred t shirts in the house just waiting for them to dry. We got them on the heater, we got them in the oven, like it was crazy. So, um, but that's, I feel like everybody going through that. That's like the confusing stage. Like, you just don't know what to do, but you're trying to figure it out. But after that, we figure like, um, it's, it's different ways. You could, you could order, you could order shirts and, um, put your own logo on them, like order wholesale shirts. Or once you find like a decent manufacturer, somebody that'll make it from scratch, or if you take the classes and learn yourself, make it from scratch, you know what I'm saying? It's designers that do that. That's when it get more serious for you, and um, that's the main thing. Just finding like a good manufacturer that you could work with and building relationships, not only with manufacturers but with photographers, um, with with um, like interviewers, people that can interview you. Um, what else? Um, celebrity stylists. You know what I'm saying? So all these different, all these different um relationships is good to build. And um, but the the to lean more towards what you said, it's really like for me, it's like this. All right, so what we do is we create designs, 
We send it to the manufacturer. Um, we tell them we we choose the fabric we want. You know what I'm saying? Like we want this, yo, we want this silk, or we want this this French terry, or we want this fleece, whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying? And um he'll do a sample, get a sample made. It come to us. We'll try it, make sure the size and everything is correct how we want it. If it's correct, I right, said so go, give us a hundred of those, give us five hundred of those, whatever it may be. Or we make little adjustments, like, yo, I don't like how you did this. Can you adjust this? Or yo, you know, I don't like the color of this. Let's switch it to this. And, um, so let's jump back to the beginning when you're like cooking these joints in the oven, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me like a dollar amount to start. Not where you at now. We're gonna get there, but a dollar amount to start. To, what did you guys like to, really start with? To 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 be honest, it's all about what you feel comfortable with and what you could afford. Cause for me, like um, and my partner as well, like we we had a we had a decent amount of money to play with. You know what I'm saying? We was willing to risk it because we believed in ourselves that much. So we might have, let's say, I don't know, let's say it was three thousand. I can't remember exactly what it was. I know it was a couple thousand. We still, but let's say it was three or five thousand. We was willing to risk that. You know what I'm saying? And we did that. But you could start off even if it's a hundred dollars and you make, I don't know, four or five shirts. And you sell them and make ten dollars over each one. You just take your time. You take your time and and you gradually grow. You know. Um. So it's really whatever's comfortable for you and how much you believe in yourself and your brand. I love it. So now let's get back to you dealing with manufacturers. Yeah. How do you find them? Oh man, it's it's. You just gotta get out there. <laughs> that's the secret right there. Like that's that's like. For example, Gucci ain't gonna tell me like how could I get they manufacturer, you know what I'm saying? But um it's 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 a lot about it's just grinding, bro. Anything you really want, you're gonna find it. You know, YouTube tell you how to do things, um, if you go to school for it, it's it's like anything. Whatever you wanna be, you go to school, you learn how to do it, you know? Um and that's basically what I was doing. I was everywhere. I'm asking people. I'm going to Chinatown. Yo, what's up? Uh, who can make this? Or I'm going to to the local print shops, asking them to introduce me to somebody. I will pay them to to just for, just to introduce me. I pay you to introduce me to this person. Like, it's it's a bunch of ways to go about it, man. It's just like how far are you willing to take it, you know? Um, but, yeah. So what's next in 2020 for you guys? What's next? But we got a lot. We got a lot going on. Um, lately we've been working on like sweatsuits and and bubble jackets, winter coats, and everything. We want to start working on denim and like blazers. Get more into the to the to the more um <clears throat> to the more dressier side, you know. And um, we in a couple stores right now. Eventually we're gonna get our own store, but. That's not like the main goal right now. The main goal is just getting it out there and just, just, just branding and just networking. Um, for me, like I said, I'm I'm the traveler. So for me, I plan on going to the four fashion capitals, which is Milan, Paris, New York, and London. So with this year, I'm probably gonna go at least the two of them and um, you know, just attend a lot of fashion shows and just continue to network and build relationships, like I was saying before, you know. I love it. Uh, so, you guys started from the bottom. You grind it up. You have plans to leave in the country with this. Yeah, definitely. That's love right there. That's motivation. So, you guys have a website. Mm -hmm. Where can they find you? www.zefmanuel.com. Z-E-F-F-M-A-N-U-E-L.com. Is it the same on Instagram? Zef underscore Manuel. Yeah. What about a Facebook? Zef Manuel. So that's where you can find them, guys. Now let's talk business. Let's talk it. Can people purchase products offline? Definitely, yeah. I love it. Definitely. How do you <laughs> manage being a traveler, networking, and the business side of things? I mean, for me, it's I I always like I always like being a hands on person, and 
that's where the trust issue comes in. Like, I, like with me, with certain things I do, I don't want to just trust anybody to do it. I feel like I got to do everything. Eventually, you know, we're going to have, we're going to hire a whole team and have a bunch of workers. But for now, I don't feel like it's too much to handle. You know, on um, the website, you know, a lot of stuff, it's easy to work off your phone. You got social media right there on your phone. Um, the orders coming in right there on your phone through emails or whatever the case may be. You just put it together when you get to your office or home later on. Or you can even go through Shopify and stuff like that. Like you can send them clothing and they'll mail it out when people order if you're traveling. Um, but for me, another thing too, I keep, I keep like, I keep like, um, I keep clothes like with me in the trunk. Like I'm pumping it out the trunk, like everywhere Master I go. Master P style. Yeah, Master P style. If I'm in New York, if I'm in Boston, if I'm in LA, I got clothes with me. So if you right there and you want to buy it, cool. So it's like, yeah, I just, I like being hands on. I like challenging myself. How much could I handle? How far could I take this with just me or just, you know what I'm saying? So without asking for help, if I need the help eventually, then I, it's not a problem. But right now I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's too much. Perfect. What inspired you? What inspired me? Me personally, what inspired me was like, all right, so as a child, I remember like going, I was raised by a single mother. I remember going to school and, you know, we would get our new clothes at the beginning of the school year. You know, you I, I used to sleep next to my outfits like, all right, I'm wearing this in the morning. <laughs> so, um, but I would go to school, right? And where my, my mom, she would do what she had to do. I would go to school, wear a new outfit, boom. Flee, everybody on it, complimented. They got their new outfit. The next day, I would go to school, another new outfit. But after them two or three days, it would slow up for me. Now I got to remix my outfit. Let me mm-hmm. wear this top with these jeans. Let me. But other kids, they got new clothes for two, three weeks straight. <laughs> I don't know what they moms and pops out there <laughs> doing, but we ain't got that. So what I used to do was um, my cousin... He used to shout out dude. He used to he used to come in and stay at our house all the time. And um he was more he was more in his style. He was like more up to date on style, or whatever. And when he would sleep, I used to take certain of his clothes and put it in my backpack. And I would wear what my mom's bought me out to go to school. You know what I'm saying? Let her feel good. Like, you know what I'm saying? And wear I'm wearing what she got me. And it was this being the house around the corner from my crib. So I would go in the being the house before class and I would change my clothes. Mind you, my cousin, he like five, six years older than me, so the clothes wild baggy. <laughs> I'm coming to school. I'm in fourth grade. I'm in fifth grade. What is that? Watson, I'm in Watson fifth Williams. grade with with the with the crazy um <laughs> Emmett Smith jersey on down on my knees, you feel me? <laughs> but it's fly though. So it's and this was in style back then. But also baggy clothes is kinda in style, so I kinda got away with it. But um after school, I would go back to that bandit crib, swap my clothes back out. Going with my mom's bought me and throw my cousin clothes back where I found them at. So just that thought alone, just like, I right, damn, like, I don't ever want to be able to go back to that. So when we first started the fashion brand, for me, it was like more, I wanted to make something that was fly, but affordable for people that couldn't really afford it that much. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have that, that, that much money, but they wanted something fly. I want to do that. But as I grew into it, like I said, I wanted to go more luxury like more luxurious so eventually we'll probably still have that affordable price and then we'll have that i uh, that top dollar price that's how like everything we buy in life is in packages it comes yeah. in bundles mm-hmm. like i may have a wedding price a wedding package that's way up here yeah then i got one that's in the middle that's where i want you to land i want you to land in the middle yeah if i can just hit this middle price over and over you're gonna it, eat i'm gonna eat you're gonna eat and then i got my entry level one too where you really don't get too much but i get the job done for you if this is what you got yeah but once i show you that album that comes with this right here yeah. you ain't gonna want this one you're gonna jump up to this middle package yeah but if you hit that top one oh we going to sizzler tonight <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, if I talk to you into this one right here, we ain't good. <laughs> so that's how that's how I can see the structure to the to what you guys are looking to do. You yeah. got your entry level one. It's gonna be fly because you're not gonna put out nothing that isn't fly. Exactly. It's definitely gonna be quality. Mm-hmm. And then you turn around, you got you something that's a little next level. Exactly. Like, like look at the Nikes we wear. You got forty dollar Nikes. Then you got the 
the Air Max 95s. You see what I'm saying? Then you got the Jordans with the Nike. Yeah, yeah. You got you got Nikes that cost twenty to three hundred. Then you got off white. Exactly. Two thousand. And it's all Nike. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All these Nikes, they got you something. They, oh, they got something for the person that only got twenty bucks. Yeah. And then they got them Jordans that's two hundred. Yeah, whatever you need, we so, got it. <laughs> yeah. So I see I see what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, bro. So, I mean, I just wanna say from me to you. Like yesterday, you already know I told you yesterday how you motivated me to get off the couch. Yeah. So your story alone is just motivation. Yeah. So I want you to just continue to let the people know and show the people that it's possible. Nah, definitely, definitely. Um, Anything is possible. Like impossible, if you separate the first two words, I mean the first two letters, it spells I'm possible. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, um. Like I was telling you, like last week, I'm in a wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be they be wearing the clothing brand. I'm pulling up anywhere. I'm pulling up four hours away just to bring somebody a jacket. They like, yo, you really pulled up, and you in a wheelchair. So like, like I even told you last week, I went to Vegas for a fashion event. I drove to L. A. for a photo shoot. From L. A. I flew back to Buffalo. I drove from Buffalo back to Utica, which is four hours. The next day, I drove to New York for another photo shoot with SBL. Shout out to SBL. Um, the night after that, I drove that same night. I drove to Boston for my daughter, and then three, four days later, I'm driving back home. So like, it, it's really no excuses. If I could do this in a wheelchair, anybody with their own two feet, like you, it's really no excuses. You got to get up, get out there, and get it. Like it ain't going, it ain't going to come to you. You know what I'm saying? I love it. So. Let the people know where they can find you again. Yeah. www.zephmanuel.com on Instagram, Zeph underscore Manuel. On Facebook, Zeph Manuel. So, how are you born in the 90s and still talking that www stuff? We don't need that no more. <laughs> Zephmanuel.com, man. Yeah, That's it. Drop yeah, that w- yeah, <laughs> yeah. You heard him. <laughs> All that. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just listen, man. I'm just nah, I'm just yeah. messing with you, man. You drove out here. We chopped it up all day. It's about to be a birthday. I don't even got no watch That's when I'm looking fact. at my we wrist. We got a couple hours. Yeah, so happy birthday. We got two good looking. We got we got an hour and a half. We about to yeah. be lit. Yo, listen, how are you gonna do the show like that? It's supposed to be um good morning. I know it's ten at night and we shooting this. But <laughs> listen, that's it's just a hustle. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just a hustle. It's ten at night and we really shooting this. I done blew the spot up, right? Yeah, you blew the spot up, man. <laughs> well, listen, nah, man, make so sure what, man. make sure you get up, you get out, and mm-hmm. you get you some. Get you some.